when you have followed my channel you will surely know that in the past I was busy with this chip. It's the NA5532 and uh, as far as I can see it's a kind of op amp anyway. Uh, I made other videos with it and I will give the links in the description. This op amp has very good properties. Uh, when we go to the data sheet you can surely see that it can handle a maximum 10 megahertz. Is that real? Well, I really don't know. Uh, I've tested it not so far anyway. And here is say the circuit on the breadboard. It's a combination of an earlier video that I made with the so-called half 4040 and I will give the link in the description. Uh, it's a, a 12 stage ripple counter and uh, it's a kind of uh, electronic circuit chip where say a pulse, a charge is pushed through all these say um, elements inside that chip. More info perhaps in the earlier video. And this is by the way that chip. It's only a part of the uh, schematic now. And perhaps interesting to tell, uh, I've only showed two LED outputs out. And in this case I want to demonstrate this chip as say uh, a divider for frequencies. And that could be very interesting when you are interested in certain audio experiments. For instance when you send in here on the clock a certain frequency and here is that frequency generator and I will tell more about it. So when you send in here on that clock a certain frequency you will find here at all the outputs a different frequency out because this chip has the uh, property that it divides the frequency. So uh, in theory when you send here in a uh, thousand hertz um, at the first division by 2 it could be that you you get out here 500 hertz. Well I'm going to tell much more about it in this video but that is a kind of basic thing that I wanted to tell. Um, well about that schematic you see properties of the chip. You can find them on the World Wide Web. These are the properties. Uh, the data sheet tells us that it can give out maximum 33 volts. Well I'm not sure about it. I always stay on the safe side uh, at, the se at the 700 ohms load. But anyway the slew rate that is say how quick such a chip can uh, switch is n uh, 9 volts by microseconds. Well anyway I don't know exactly what it means. Uh, and then I mean in a practical situation. And here we have to do with a practical situation. So let me switch on all the things that have to be switched on for this demo. It's a demo circuit. This is my scope. And we see here now at the output a frequency of 103 hertz. That's of course important. And here we see the input frequency. 
say we have a certain circuit where the input frequency is very high the chip the chip that I have indicated here divides that frequency so um, it's important to tell that I did quite a few measurements and I will tell more about it I hope I have enough time to do that say when we are talking about this um, divider chip that divides frequencies you have here a table that I've made and it is related to the input circuit with that uh, high quality op amp so so here we have the input sec the, the input circuit here is that op amp uh, I have connected quite a few capacitors here going from, from one microfarad non polar of course to uh, 500 picofarad and in that case this chip gives out of course different frequencies and these frequencies are sent out at pin A1 here to the half chip and that's why you see here that green uh, yellow wire so here is the output the output goes from that uh, pin 1 to the divider chip and that's here and here at all the pins out we can take the different frequencies out and I've made that table I will show it it goes from 3 Hertz up to approximately 48 kilo cycles kilohertz and um, that are the frequencies that you can take out uh, at all of these output pins because when this chip is working it divides by two and again by two and again by two etc etc so that the frequency diminishes but perhaps interesting to tell I found some small flaws anyway so here's the table I will skip over slowly uh, like I told the uh, frequencies out of this chip here are sent into the divider chip that's here uh, when you use one microfarad we go from 230 240 Hertz to lower than 6 Hertz and my uh, scope read my counter it also can count the frequency um, cannot say in a proper way detect frequencies lower than approximately 6 Hertz so one microfarad with 1.56 microfarad we are on 884 Hertz at uh, say the primary frequencies and of course you can see that this chip divides by 2 so 884 divided by 2 here divided by 2 etc etc and I found some small flaws I cannot say uh, give a good explanation apart perhaps that here in this test circuit I had um, omitted a certain output of that chip but I cannot repair that because everything is immersed in a well-cured silicon kit so 
everything is dry uh, and I cannot detect how I exactly made that say uh, uh, sixth output anyway so let's pan over a little bit here you see the frequencies that you can make with that uh, setup you see here constantly that the first frequency is divided by two etc etc and when you study the data sheet of the used chip you can say also conclude that uh, the very very good thing of this uh, chip is that when you send in here a waveform that is somewhat distorted on the higher frequencies on that uh, NA5532 chip the waveform uh, changes a little bit to a kind of triangle wave but at the output here we see constantly a very very pure uh, square wave with a proper um, ratio say 50 to 50 the duty cycle is 50 to 50 even when we send in here when we send in here this kind of wave so high frequency in say 48 kilo cycles and we have here that beautiful square wave I don't know exactly why it is repaired in such a good way I think the chip here that half chip is driven completely into saturation by say uh, smaller voltages smaller AC voltages especially smaller AC voltages in this frequency range but anyway it works nice and all these LEDs are of course not necessary but they show you say uh, that the circuit works and when you go to lower frequencies I cannot demonstrate that now because I only have 15 minutes on my camera you will surely see them flicker here etc uh, etc et I'm now on the highest frequency that this circuit can handle again beautiful waveform here uh, input waveform here etc etc go to the table for a small moment and then back to the way how it was made thanks for watching a uh, good idea is perhaps that will be in a second video that you uh, can make the input cap here variable with the help of a potentiometer that means that you can get to say very specific frequencies output thanks for watching again let's look at the beautiful side of the input wave and the output wave and everything on my workbench. Merry Christmas!